Rub up your engines! Mazda Miata, the only two-door roadsters that sold more than a million worldwide. Now, how did they sell so many? Considering they have relatively tiny engines, it's a 1.8 liter inline four-cylinder engine. It only puts out 128 horsepower. Better than the original 115, but hey, no rocket. Now, at least this model came with a manual transmission. It's a five-speed. If you get one of these, especially the old ones, the automatics are dog, and they broke all the time. Do not get an older one with an automatic. But these manual transmissions are pretty bulletproof. They're a classic Roadster. Engine in the front, transmission, and then strictly rear wheel drive. You get more smiles per gallon in this car than just about any car out there. No, you're not gonna beat too many people in drag races. That's not what this thing is for. This is a fun little two seat convertible for cruising around in. What I really like about it is what a lot of people hate is you can get a real basic hand crank windows. And you have to worry about the tops motor breaking? No, it doesn't have a motor. Top up, snaps on on the inside. Then when you want it down, top down. Make sure it's got a little trunk, but at least it has a trunk. The trunk is not storing the convertible top. There's a reasonable amount of room in it. Now this 94 Miata was just purchased for 4,500 bucks in the shape you see it now. The main reason he paid 45 was because he got the hard top with it, matching red that snaps on. Some of those hard tops in the shape is, which is original shape, the top alone will go for two grand. You get tired of a rag top, you can put that hard top on in the winter. A lot of people don't like rag tops cause they're noisy. You got a rag top. You drive by a diesel truck with the rag top up, you hear all the noise. But with a hard top, no. Now that's one reason a lot of the modern cars are convertibles, but they have hard tops that fold on and off, but they use machines to do it. Hydraulics are very complex. Cost a fortune to fix when they break. The top for this just snaps on. He's got it stored in his garage because he's not using it now. You can put it on whenever you want, and then you don't have to deal with all that noise. So basically you got a hard top and a soft top in one car. Now a lot of people negated these things saying, oh, it's a girly car. The main reason they sell so many is because they're fun to drive, and as we start it up, <laughs> realize they can run an indefinite period of time. This particular one has 155,000 miles. Listen to that engine. Doesn't shake, not particularly loud. And it's a Japanese car. Almost everything still works. Turn on the AC. Still blows cold. Power steering still works fine. Still gets good gas mileage. Most everything is still stock on it. Back in those days, 94. Mazda made some of the worst automatic transmissions in the world. This is a standard. You don't have to worry about any of that automatic transmission crap. Like I said previously, I wouldn't buy one with an automatic. They're dogs. But if you are going to buy an old one with an automatic, pay a guy like me to check it out before you do. You have to. Because if that transmission's going out, you don't want to buy the car. I've had people buy the automatic transmission car, throw the tranny away, and put a standard transmission instead. Nothing wrong with that if you don't mind doing all that work. Typical well-built Japanese car. Change the oil every 5,000 miles of coolant. Once every five years or so, they can last forever. And with this, there's only one thing you gotta worry about. This has a rubber timing belt. So you wanna change the timing belt every 100,000 miles. Modern ones, of course, have timing chains, but all these old ones, they had timing belts on them. Take the plastic crap off. It's very easy to change these timing belts. I've done a bunch of them. I could probably change the timing belt in this thing in an hour, hour and a half. They're very easy to work on. The cams are here, the crank's down there. Lots of working room. You could do it yourself. And if you do pay a mechanic, don't overpay. Shop around because this is a very easy car to do. It's a double overhead cam engine with one timing belt inside it. They're very easy to change. Now, before these cars were made, I had a friend. He said, I love English sports cars. A lot of people do, but they break down. They're made like crap. Somebody should make an English sports car that has a Japanese engine in it. Well, Mazda went one better. They built the whole car, the Mazda Miata, and people bought them in droves. Now, of course, there is an English sports car out there with the Toyota engine, 
the little lotuses they upgraded them a little but one i had here the other day hey it only had 30 more horsepower than the matrix the main thing is they're small light cars they're fun to drive around and that's what this is now normally checking out a used car like this you know i'm gonna hook up my scan tool and do a bunch of tests right well this is a 94 it's obd1 so most of that stuff is useless i got to use my head and years of experience to check one of these out. but if you are going to check one of these babies out the first thing you want to do just turn the key on don't start the car make sure that the check engine light comes on when you start the car up the check engine light's supposed to come on if it's not on it means somebody removed the bulb and it might have a lot of problems then what you do is you start the car and of course the light should go off which it did the brakes only on because i got the brake on there now that's off too so with this miata we know the lights there the system's working and as we drive around we just watch if that check engine light comes back on while you're driving there's a problem and then you'd want to have it checked out before you bought it form like this one they're pretty quiet when you rev it up they really don't make that much noise and most people like it that way but you can put in loud mufflers whatever you want to do that's your choice they're quiet enough that nobody's thinking twice when you're driving it around check it out and i do literally mean check it out you want to check them out it's not that they break on their own much but if they're broken it's often signs of massive front end damage i wouldn't buy it. being a sports car they're pretty low to the ground not outrageous but you can see this one has been repainted there's the overspray they forgot to take the tape off after they did the job but i gotta say they did a pretty good job painting it the car itself looks good i was repainted before because i can see the tape marks here on the pillar but they did a pretty good job repainting it, I gotta say. But even though it's a 29 year old car, hey, the chrome is still in good shape. They made a good job when they built these things. Original wheels, you could paint them over to make them look a little nicer. But it even came with these decent tires already on it. And even though it's a small car, it's still pretty solid built. Listen, new cars don't even sound that solid. So take it for a spin. This is what makes these cars so much fun. A little open air roadster. When you get to the cars, they're fun for spinning around in. You can have a lot of fun in one of these things. You don't need to go a million miles an hour. It just feels like you are with the top down and being low to the ground. Easy, smooth shifting. These things are just a lot of fun to drive around. And even though it's a two-door roadster, it's extremely dependable. You see many of them still going. Even though a lot of kids drive and rag the heck out of them, they keep going down the road. They got excellent balance. Sure, they're not perfect like a mid-engine or rear-engine car, but hey, they are a lot of fun to drive around. And like I said, they're no drag cars. We'll go full speed now. I mean, they go down the road, but they're not going to break any land speed records. They're just a lot of fun. They're not going to leave you stranded. You get tired of the rag top. You can put the hard top back on. Hey, it's an all around fun little car. Now, the speedometer is overly optimistic with this 140. The real top speed of this thing is 118 miles an hour, and you're really pushing at that. But, it is just so much fun to drive around. It makes the regular speed limits when you got the top down feel like you're speeding anyway. So who cares? This is not a race car. It's a fun car that you can drive for a really long time for a really low price. I mean, he only paid 4,500 bucks for this thing. And the only thing he did to it was polish the tires and detail it to make it look snappy. And as you can see while I'm road testing, when I floor it, I don't hear any backfiring. And when I let go of the gas, it decelerates smoothly, it doesn't jerk, and it doesn't backfire. If it's backfiring, jerking, hey, you don't want to buy something like that. Because there's so many of these out there that are still in excellent shape because they were so well built. As long as they got this manual transmission, and you don't have to deal with the crappy automatics that Mazda has built over the years. Let's face it, this thing is basically a go-kart for adults. You can have a lot of fun in these things. A very small amount of money. Look at that. Handles like a dream, even though it's almost 30 years old. Now, there's plenty of ragged out ones that you can buy that are a lot cheaper than this, like this one here that my grandson bought. But if you could find one in this kind of shape, that looks and runs like this, and also has a hard top for 4,500 bucks, you're getting a sweet deal. You could have a toy for a while and then sell it on to somebody else. This isn't like some English or Italian or German sports car that's an endless money pit that's a bomb waiting to explode and if it explodes on you, you're the one who's got to pay for it all. These are very dependable cars. You buy one like this that's solid and good, hey, 
It's a decent investment. Really, the only thing that doesn't work in this is the radio. And hey, it's a junky radio anyways. He's gonna put a nice Android in soon. They're interesting cars. They were well made. You can get them dirt cheap. Although not a new one dirt cheap. The Miata Club fancy one with Brembos and stuff is $35,800, so they're not giving them away. But these used ones, for that kind of money, 4,500 bucks, the average new car costs about 45,000. You get 10 of these for one of those. And that's a deal. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.